Gary Morin is the man behind some of Western Massachusetts' most well-known signs. A precocious artist with nothing but a paintbrush and a block of wood, Morin started hand-painting his own signs in his parents' basement when he was just 11 years old. This year marks the 40th anniversary of Morin Signs of Agawam, which has left its ubiquitous marks throughout the valley, with signs such as those for the Hippodrome, United Bank, and the Westfield Shops. Producer Dave Fraser visited the sign shop recently and shares his story. I was living in Feeding Hills with my parents. I was like about 11 years old. I was working at a farm stand at the corner, and the farm stand needed a sign. So I made a sign, and um, he paid me for it. So I found, figured out pretty quickly I could make $20 in a half an hour or something like that. And for an 11-year-old kid, that was uh, pretty good. I enjoyed the creativity and, and just starting with basically nothing, some paper and a few pennies worth of paint and your own skill and a little bit of time and you could turn nothing into something pretty rapidly and the more your skill level developed, the, the better you got, the more things you could do and better things and for better money and so on. Well, in, in the early 80s, about 80 or 81, somebody in Connecticut, a company by the name of Gerber, invented a, um, a CAD system or a, a plotter, so to speak, with an XY move. It's just a robot that, you know, spools material through it and, and, and cuts letters. These machines got more efficient and more capable and, and they became to, started to be able to do pictures with them and other things. Now we have a machine in the other room and it'll do full color prints right onto the material. Start designing mostly on this machine right here, an inkjet print, sometimes emailed over, sometimes picked up or delivered in person. And that starts the ball rolling, but that's usually not the clothes right there. You usually have changes, you know, color changes, font changes. People want to see it a different way. So you might go through two or three or more designs before the customer is ready to go ahead. It takes a few years of doing this to realize that different signs work for different businesses. So you try to tailor the type of sign to the needs of the business. And then the critical thing is that does it fit the zoning requirements? Can you get a permit for it? We did the Hippodrome on Main Street in Springfield, which is a replication of the original 1939 Paramount Theater sign, which was all what we call open face neon, where there's no covers. The red neon is exposed to the weather and somewhat shrouded by a little ribbon of metal around each letter. That's old style, it's not being done anymore. Shortly after we did that, two or three years later, the Republican contacted us to do four by 50 foot uh, moving message. So we put two of those up and two large sets of neon letters with white neon for them. And over in Westfield, we did a large pylon sign, which actually won an award from the State Sign Association, the Westfield Shop sign. This is just a set of mechanical drawings for a uh, police sign that we're just completing for the town of Orleans. They just built a brand new $12 million police station and they wanted a, an exceptional sign to go out in front. Many times we've had to take a weekend trip out of town or go somewhere, maybe even stay over just to see a sign that we made so I can take pictures of it and catalog it. Uh, so yeah, I enjoy that part. I enjoy driving by signs every day on the way home that I did over the last few years that are probably gonna be there for a while.